I often get asked whether people should use AWS Amplify or should use the serverless framework for a project they are working on. Annoyingly, it kind of depends on what kind of project you want to build. In this video, I'm going to give a quick introduction to both systems and then talk about the pros and cons of each of them and which I would use in each situation. Amplify is a tool created by AWS which makes it really easy to, to build, host and deploy your applications inside AWS. It has really simple ways to deploy APIs, DynamoDB tables, as well as Cognito authentication. Its main purpose is to make it as easy as possible for anyone to build an application in AWS. The serverless framework is an open source project which makes building APIs with AWS really simple. It compiles down to CloudFormation, but gives a nice concise way to define API endpoints, lambdas, and integration into multiple services from those lambdas. It also has a massive community and hundreds and hundreds of plugins, which make building more functionality really simple. So what are some of the advantages of the Amplify platform? Well, first it's designed to make development of applications with Dynamo and Cognito as simple as possible. They've got a really cool UI system. So let's jump onto the computer and have a look through that. One of the nice things about Amplify is the fact that it comes with a lot of UI where you can look at what you've got deployed as well as actually deploying new services from the console. So if we go into an example project, here we can see the project we've got and on the back end, we've already got authentication, API and file storage. And if we wanted to download this and make some local setup changes, there are some nice instructions on how to do that. Another really cool advantage of Amplify is it has built in CI and CD. So if you click on hosting environments, you can connect your GitHub or Bitbucket repo so that anytime there is a change, it automatically gets deployed into your environment. This is really nice as often CI and CD are complicated things that take a lot of time and experience to set up well. Another thing that's really cool about Amplify is the Amplify Studio. So if you clicked on Launch Studio, I've already got it open in a new tab. You get this really nice UI, which is basically a management app for your Amplify environment. You can do some really cool things, such as if we click on the Manage Content, it will find all of your Dynamo tables and allow you to actually create or remove or edit items in your database from within the UI. And similarly for file browsing, we can see all of our S3 information as well as change any files that need to be changed. Finally, in terms of management, we can go into user management and we can see all of the users that are signed up to this application and delete them or edit the users wherever necessary. Talking about Cognito, if we go down to the setup and authentication, in here we can control how our Cognito works, the login mechanisms, as well as how people sign up, password protection and verification messages all configured from within this console. We can do something similar with our Dynamo databases where we can basically define our data model. In here, we've got the drop downs so we can define everything from within the console, which is honestly a really nice way of doing things because you can actually design your whole database schema in the console instead of having to do it inside code. There's something similar for storage, where we can control what a signed in user or a guest user is able to do, as well as if we go on to functions, where there isn't a UI for this, there are some very nice simple commands which tell you how to do it in your local environment. 
There's also configuration for GraphQL, REST APIs, as well as some more advanced services such as analytics, predictions, interactions and notifications, which behind the scenes use a multitude of different AWS services from Translate, Transcribe, Poly and loads more. So they're really useful for using some of these really nice serverless services without having to dig into the code for each of those. One of the new things that's also come with Amplify Studio is the UI library. Now this isn't something I've actually tested, but the idea is that you can design your application in Figma and then automatically convert that from Figma into React components, which then can be used inside your application. If you are trying to build an application and you don't have that much React experience, you might be able to design it all in Figma and then export that and create your app without having to write loads of custom React code. Amplify has also got a new feature recently where it can now be extended with the AWS CDK. This means if there's something that you can't configure through the Amplify system, you can just define it in the CDK and that will be deployed as part of your application. It also has a very active development from AWS. This means there are regularly new features coming out and improvements made to make the experience and the functionality even better. On the flip side, Amplify does have a couple of drawbacks. The first is that local testing is not super well supported. Whilst there is support for mocking your GraphQL endpoint, REST APIs are not as well supported. Another drawback is that the community is quite small and is quite new because Amplify is a newer product. This means that there are less tutorials out there, but also that there are less people out there that can help you if you get stuck, as well as there only being like four or five community plugins. Finally, the last thing is that although there is a lot of active development, that means that things are changing very rapidly. I made a video just like six months ago and it's already out of date. So if you build applications maybe once a year, a lot of what you learn one year will be changed by the next time you build an application. This should start to settle down as Amplify matures, but at the moment, there's a lot of things going on. With the serverless framework, it is super easy to create APIs and Lambda functions. That was the initial aim of the project, and it is incredibly easy to set that up. It also has a massive community. This means there are tutorials for pretty much everything you could imagine, as well as having large communities on forums. So if you have a question, there is almost certainly someone out there that is able to help you. That also kind of leads on to the fact that there are hundreds and hundreds of plugins. Whether it's wanting to set up Cognito, using AppSync or anything else, there are loads of plugins out there that will help streamline your development process so that you're not having to write as much raw cloud formation. Finally, there is the serverless dashboard. This is an offering from the serverless company and they enable you to add things like CI, CD and monitoring in a really user-friendly way very similar to something like Amplify. Unfortunately, as with everything, there is a flip side to the serverless framework. Because it is targeted at API development initially, then anything you want to do outside of that, so DynamoDB tables, S3 buckets, or Cognito, you either need to use a plugin or you need to write raw CloudFormation. CloudFormation is relatively complicated and is very verbose. So you end up writing loads of code for every single feature. So if there isn't a plugin available for what you want to do, you are going to end up having to write some cloud formation. The serverless framework is also not as low code 
or new developer friendly as something like Amplify. There's no really pretty console which allows you to provision things from within a UI. It is more based on code, but I think that is based around what their target audience is. So which platform should you use for your project? If you're building a website and you're either new to AWS or new to software development, I would honestly go with Amplify as it's gonna make that first journey into AWS and deploying a simple application really, really easy for you. On the other side, if you're building a SaaS application, you are almost certainly going to be needing functionality that is beyond the scope of Amplify. Therefore, you should go with the serverless framework. Whilst you could go with Amplify, get the core running and then use the CDK to extend it, then you're writing code in the CDK, which kind of mitigates all of the benefits of using Amplify in the first place. The third example is if you're building a proof of concept or a demo where you just need something up, up and running as quickly as possible. In this case, I would go with Amplify unless there is some very specific backend functionality that you need to get your proof of concept or demo working. Going with Amplify and the speed at which you can get set up and have your app running will be crucial for this proof of concept stage. Finally, if you're looking to learn one of these platforms to then become a full-time developer, I would definitely go with the serverless framework. Large companies aren't going to be using Amplify as Amplify is designed with limitations and restrictions which help guide a newer or less experienced developer, but limit what you can do as a company with developers who know what they're doing. With the serverless framework, you have complete control over how everything in your application is configured. So that is what is going to be used in industry. So today we've looked at the pros and cons of both Amplify and the serverless framework and we've looked at a couple of situations and which of the frameworks I would look to use if I was in those situations. If you've liked this video and are interested in checking out serverless, then check out this video here where I help you get set up with serverless and deploy your first application.